Hi, I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Devs. Welcome to our Pico 8 uh, roguelike tutorial. Uh, and so today what we're going to do is we are we are doing procedural generation. We are doing the thing that we set out to do and it works pretty nicely, I would say. This is this is a pretty good start for procedural generation as you saw. Like we create a bunch of rooms and we can like they're like nicely interconnected. There's like multiple paths to to the exit. You know, there's there's this is an adventure it is creating here. I this is a fascinating connection here, by the way. Like where there's like th it's like a three-way hallway. That's great. I love it. Good. So today, what we're gonna do is something I don't like is where I cannot actually play through the game. I would love to go multiple levels um, up the stairs. Kind of like to create like this level structure. And uh, also I have, you don't see it, but I have a bunch of things that I want to be going through, uh, little details before we go there. So let's do the little details. Skip AI in update sucks. Skip AI in update. So we're gonna go update P turn. This part here, that sucks. Well, it doesn't suck really, but it could be a bit, a bit better, I think. So something we can do is always when we do the check and always at the end. Um, first of all, when we're back, we're gonna go skip AI equals false. Like we always do this. And then we're gonna do if check and and not skip AI. And not skip AI. Um, then do AI. Uh, this skip AI has to go here though. So it's after this KPI is uh, being uh, checked for. So let's see if this works. Uh, we don't have any enemies. So we can't, we can't tell if this works, but hopefully it works. We're gonna see later on. Let's spawn an enemy. Can you spawn an enemy? Mm. Let's try to add a mob somewhere. Um. Let's make it two one, and let's make it in the center of the screen. Let's try how. Let's see how this works. Um, nope. Maybe it will work. Oh wait, I'm I'm the mob now. Oh, because I. <laughs> that's so cool. I've become I've become I've become the the, the slime. That's so funny. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, I was, what I want to see is like if bumping the wall will advance. No, it won't advance. So I actually have to move for, for the AI to work. Okay, great. This worked. It's so funny. Good. First thing done. Um, like this. A mid on the area calculation. Ah, that's a good one. That's a procedural generation topic. Uh, by the way, uh, here in the to-do list for procedural generation, I added an entry not in an alcove, I think. One of those p points here, or maybe, oh yeah, no doors next to doors. There's there's something I, I missed. Um, no doors on exit. Um, so you might have noticed on a, one of the previous episodes, I had like this little situation where there was a door leading to nowhere. And I was wondering what the problem was because it was a problem that we were trying to solve and it solved itself except from this one exception but it didn't pop up later on. I went um, on back to the tapes and realized the problem was there was an exit in that room and the exit just happened to be on the same spot where um, the uh, level generator placed the door. So it kind of like overrode the exit so there was actually no exit for this level. So we have to be careful when you're placing doors that we're not placing doors on exits. <laughs> Because exits are marked as walkable terrain, uh, walkable terrain. So they're kind of like uh, there's. Mm, we're gonna look into this later. Um, so when we're doing the area calculation for the rooms here, we we did something wrong here. Uh, so the thing that we did wrong here is um, it's uses the, like this max function to kind of like make sure that the width um, uh, or the height. The maximum height of the room that you're generating is limiting the maximum size of that the room can be. It's never smaller. Uh, the room will never generate bigger than 35 um, tiles in uh, in surface area. But the problem is because we're using the max here, what we actually ended up doing is um, um, we actually made it so that uh, that is always like this. 
um, even uh, even though we might have wanted to create a smaller room. So it kind of like resets the size of the of the rooms that are being generated to you know the maximum surface area, um, uh, or at least you know like it's between the maximum surface area and uh, and three always the, no matter what you actually set up or, or to be so for example if you have like um we start with okay maximum five times five you know then the maximum surface area that results is 25 but this will reset it back to 35. um so what we have to do here is min um three is good uh, no mid mid somewhere between three um this uh, this number and the actual um maximum height so it's kind of like the actual maximum height that is set that is actually also playing a role here. Um, yeah, that's kind of like a little fix here. Let's see how that works. And I feel like I might be wrong, but I feel like this is this is the rooms are now less less gigantic. Okay, these are some gigantic rooms, uh, but it might yeah. There was like a tiny room there. So oh oh mm, isolated room. That's not good. That is actually a problem. Okay, I'm gonna write this down as a to-do, um, like a check for isolated rooms. Um, I wonder why that is oh, too. Hmm. I guess the problem is, yeah, we're um, it's because of our our algorithm, of our worm algorithm. It actually doesn't, huh, it doesn't do a thing that it should be doing. Um. Something I don't like about this procedure generation is that we cannot like repeat a thing. We have to kind of like click through until we find that that specific combination of, of things again. So that's a bit of an issue here. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna write this down as a thing to to um, to watch out for isolated rooms or removing isolated rooms. Um, it's a kind of like an easy fix to like we kind of like um, have to do like a check for um, for the areas after we set the flags and everything we do a check for the areas and make sure that there's just one area left and if there's more than one area left that means that there's an isolated room somewhere. We could also do like the isolated spaghetti make it so that um, it um, it actually creates more crazy, more f fuzzy spaghetti that kind of like has more tent tentacles. So there's always a way to um, to connect every room. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Uh, what else? Um, so the next part is going to be here in gameplay. And when you scroll all the way down, we're going to see um, calc dist. There is a candidate new array that is not local it is global so that sticks around after after calculating distance and that might have also contributed to our problems with um, with the overflow you know where the um, uh, memory overflow that we had here but okay that is good like a very very small fix here that's not not a big deal okay so this is done and then the final little fix is um, from uh, also Discord, from our Discord, from Epace, and he said, um, he noted that um, when we're picking which way to go uh, in the AI, there is, we're not doing it, we could save four tokens there, and I'm, I'm down with saving four tokens. And that's going to be here, um, here, where we uh, adding candidates to our candidates list for where uh, um, uh, mob could go and we are all adding dx and dy in here um, and that creates like a whole object and um, it seems like it's efficient because later on we just can plug in them right in here but actually we are um, wasting some tokens here and we can demonstrate this but it's like four um four nine a as you write um that's the tokens that we're starting out with so what we can do here is instead of like adding an entire object to the candidates list we're just going to add the actual direction just the direction no object whatsoever and then down here when we actually do the walk we grab um, the direction from from um, from the array and that seems like wasteful in this case because like oh man we're grabbing this this from those arrays but actually um, because um, we haven't created an object and stuff like that stuff like that we actually ended up saving four tokens like this I it seems good 
Um, again, I'm gonna, I, I, I shouldn't, shouldn't have deleted it. I want to actually test it uh, here. I want to add the mob. It's a good mob. But yeah, generally, like we're going like through multiple um, through multiple iterations, we're trying to fix this. Okay, so this mob seems to be seems to be going well. Yeah. He knows where to go. Uh, generally, we're like kind of trying to uh, nudge and tweak the procedural generation algorithm. So you know, we are going to be looking um, like stumbling sometimes over maybe some issues. So uh, it's going to be a bit difficult to plan those those um, episodes ahead because we might stumble upon like some big problem and then we have to address it immediately. Um, so bear with me here. Um, yeah, but let's do now the big thing. Like, there's this huge list here, and there's um, there's all sorts of stuff we can do. Um, maybe just like um, to start out with, uh, something I've thought about is maybe we do the fill ends after we do the start end. So first we're gonna set a start and ending point, and then we're gonna fill all of the dead ends, and that will have the um, positive side effect that maybe sometimes there's gonna be. A dead end that will have the stairways at the end and that will make a bit more of a complex level um, and also like the stairways might, might seem more integrated like not just like somewhere oh then there's a stair here but actually you know there's like a whole path leading to the stairway um, but we have to watch out here because um, this procedure might actually delete the stairs yeah so there's no stairs anymore suddenly oh. <laughs> and that's because the way we do the fill ends we have to be really careful now so far we have used the is walkable as a test for if we fill something or not. Uh, here, for example, is walkable, right? Um, but we cannot actually do that anymore um, because, yeah, here, um, because um, we starting to put in tiles that are walkable but are special tiles that shouldn't be touched. Um, so we need to be like, oh, and this is something that we need to be careful about here. So there's, I mean, we might maybe like um, expand this, maybe this can car function a bit more to be able to deal with more like alien types of uh, of tiles. But for now, we're just gonna go if can carve and um, m. Okay, uh, let's let's go, let's do like an m get here. So we're gonna go. Um, TLE and we're gonna go TLE equals M get um, X Y just something we're gonna get the tile and if it's if you can carve it and TLE is not equals uh, it's not the stairs so this this guy here 14 and TLE is not equals um, and you know we might be f do this a bit a bit um, more efficient later on for example we could do like an is walkable mode introduce a new mode for is walkable that checks not only if a tile is walkable or, or but also if there is something special maybe on that tile mm, kind of like to have like something like this but then that would mean that we also would have to change the kind carve and it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine for now this is this will solve solve that problem so now if we do this you see um Sorry, by the way, for this little snippy nose. So you can see now, for example, we started now in like this kind of dead end situation. Ah, but it's kind of nice now because it's, it's, it's you know, it's like a special hallway that we start out in. Uh, so let me try to generate a bunch of situations. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Look at this. This is horrible. Uh, so what happened here? So I guess um, it sets this point and the point right on the other side on here. Th these points and these points were the most further away. And then it looked for an alcove to carve into. So it carved into this alcove. I wonder why this alcove was understood as something that can be carved. Because it shouldn't. Okay, so now this is great. This is a good example of, of what, what is a good think we generate like this little little nook here that's that's a really cool place for the stairs to be okay now this is part of this um yeah that that over there as well like this this little hallway that leads up to the stairs that's that's very cute i like this a lot this is, this is nice um okay yep 
Yeah, I like that this starts in this little alcove. I'm looking for just some like procedural generated patterns that are not good maybe, but no, these are these are fine. Huh, this is interesting. Like a little, I like the little room underneath the stairs here, that serves no purpose. But um, yeah, this is good. Uh huh. I'm happy. Oh, dang, this is not good. How did it? How did it happen? Um, let me try to fix this problem now. So let's 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 put it down on the list um, as entrance next to exit. Ah, I see the problem. I see the problem because we're checking for the high and end in the same process. Uh, if there's like a too, too deep wall, you know, you might be able like, yeah, we can carve from this side and also we can carve from this side and that makes them meet together. So the way we would solve this is we go through this process in two steps. First, we're going to find the entrance and then we're going to find the exit and it costs a bunch of tokens, but it will prevent like this very special problem to, to from happening. So let's try to do this. So I'm going to copy this, this entire loop. Um, and in between here, I'm going to set the, um, first, let's set the exit first. So first we're going to set the exit and then we're going to do this loop again for the entrance. So first we're looking for the, um, for the exit. Um, exit. Uh, so this one goes out and then we're looking for the entrance. And again, very inefficient in terms of tokens. We lost at least like 10 tokens for this, um, but it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's necessary for the quality here, I think. Uh, something we might think about is maybe it might be worthwhile of like, mm, now, when I look at this, this might be really worthwhile now to actually put these into kind of like some kind of special function because it's like repeated three times. So maybe maybe we can do something like like this. Maybe this is this is. Mm -hmm. Let's let's do this later on. Okay, but at least we fixed this little problem. Um, um, let's make sure that this actually works. Okay, this is good. Oops, not the right button. Yep. Oh, I, I see. Uh, this is this is really nice now. I still don't quite like the starting locations for the stairs always. Uh, so for example, this I'm I'm super fine with this kind of starting location because like an alcove, but the alcove goes directly into like you know multiple multiple ways. But here, for example, it's bad. Like if we, it's kind of nice that we are kind of like have, they have the special entrance, but I kind of like don't like that we have to go through this hallway because if there's an enemy in this hallway, we cannot really avoid this enemy. I want to have like some options off the bat. Starting in a room like this is good, but it would be great if we started actually in this corner and not in an alcove inside this this room. Um, yeah, this is this is not ideal. This is good for an ending, but it's not good for the start. But again, um, that's something we're gonna. That's a thing that we're gonna uh, cross later on. Okay, so let's do the actual thing that we want to do here, and we're already very far into the episode, so I'm, I have to apologize for for holding you up like this. Um, so let me see, like, how did it um, before? So something I, I like to do is before we do the actual map generation, is to have like a wrapper function that take care, takes care of of game structure related stuff. So I, I want to do something like called function gen floor. And this will, um, this f, this will generate a floor of a certain number. So at the beginning of the game, we just instead of saying map gen the way we did it here, we're gonna go gen floor, and it's gonna be gen floor zero, kind of like the floor number zero. Gen floor zero. Um, yeah, and then we're gonna put it before the unfog. So why gen floor zero? So we're gonna have a, a, a global variable called floor, and we're gonna set it to f. 
Um, and then here, uh, we later on, we make, there might be like floors that are special. So for example, there might be this floor number zero, like the basement should be like a special floor that's kind of like a hub area that where the game hasn't actually officially started yet. Um, and then there's going to be like a final floor that's also going to be like a special area. So certain things I want to be like, okay, I want to uh, change things around and I want, don't want these to be like in the, my map gen function. This would be, the, the map gen function should be all about generating the floor. Um, so, and here I'm going to do like a map gen. And in here, for example, something we could do is, it's fine, it's fine. Um, Oh yeah, something we could also do here is actually show like a message where it's like, oh, this is this floor. But um, again, that's something we're gonna do later. Okay, so let's make it so that when we step on uh, a stairs that we're gonna go to the next floor. So that's gonna be here in gameplay. And um, we already had this a little bit, I think. Uh, it's when we move player and when it's walkable here. Uh huh. Um, so something I wanna, Oh, uh, the way we have trick pump here, I want to have the same thing called uh, function step. Uh, how do, do I call this trick bump? I'm going to call it trick step. Trick step. Um, uh, don't sh not sure if we need the destination. It, I think that's going to be fine, but we definitely want to have the the tile. Do we have, want to have the tile? Wait. Trick set tile. Yeah, just so so we can see which one we stepped on. Yeah, that's good. And then here we're just gonna go basically. Um, if tile equals the stairs, so uh, fourteen, then. And then gen floor, floor plus one. Just like going upstairs, basically. Um, and then uh, where are we going to trigger this? Well, after actually, after we did our um, our update game. So we might actually hear um, um, from the step floor here might actually return like whether something was triggered just so we don't like overwrite important stuff. So we're gonna go return. Uh, true, we trigger something, otherwise return false. So here in, um, so this is at the end of our animation. If check end, what is, why do we calc test here? We don't need the calc test here, but wait, I'm not sure why we're doing the calc test here. That's not necessary. That's something I we do for updating. <laughs> okay. Um, um, yeah, something like if strict st step. Mm, okay, uh, we actually have to check now what tile we are currently on. So do something like if um, we, we're grabbing this, so local TLE uh, equals mget uh, pmob mob dot x pmob dot y, and then I'm gonna go if um, f get TLE equals so if we stepped on a thing that triggers. Uh, that's going to be this flag one. Uh, then, and so oh, the thing I'm going to do here is uh, is like if trick step, then return. It. Or let's just do like uh, if this is true and trick step, then return. I want to cancel everything. Like, okay, we stepped on something that triggers. Let's just like get out of here. <laughs> Let's get out of here. That makes no sense. And that will also cancel the AI. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good idea though. The problem is like um, so far, the only thing that triggers is the 
um, is the stairs. And if I st step on the stairs, I don't want to, like the eye to trigger afterwards, like because then we are like in new new area, and I don't want I don't want I don't want the AI to get like first step uh, immediately after we went up. Um, so uh, I think right now it's okay, but later on this is actually super sketch for later on. So we have to think about this a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But so far it's it's fun. Um, so let's see if this works. I still have the Minecraft mode here. Okay, we went on this and nothing happened. Um, Mget mob, p mob. Oh yeah, f f get tile. That's mm. that wasn't really good, right? If so, we're gonna go something like f l tile one. One is the orange um, light. Okay, let's let's try that. Perfection. Um. You know what? I'm I I thought about maybe this part here because I don't want to do a lot of gameplay stuff in our update function. So um, I'm gonna put everything in here. I'm gonna put this stuff in here. It's just gonna be like a trick step, just making sure that it triggers whatever or whatever we walked on. So it's local TLE um, mob Y. Yes, that's good. And if TLE at there, that's that's great. Um, that makes things a bit easier here. So we don't have like F get and everything. It's just gonna be um, you know, bam. I think this is a little better. We don't need the TLE here. Um, something we could do here is maybe make sure that if P mob was actually walking, so if we bump against the wall and we're setting on something that triggers, we're not triggering constantly, like because otherwise it might be like we might have like something like press switches. And then if we bump against the wall and then we trigger a switch again that we are standing on, we are already standing on something that should trigger through our step. But actually we don't have anything like this yet. And so adding this functionality right now doesn't make so much sense. It's also fine to, to do this check, um, even if you don't know if this is something that should trigger. Um, because, yeah, because um, um, we, or we, we check for the specific tile here anyway, so that's okay. Uh, because we might actually skip the trick step if, if we're like, oh, but the tile, but the flag wasn't really set, um, right? But we actually checking, aren't checking for the flag anymore. But in on hindsight, that's probably okay because, again, here we're checking for specific tiles anyway. Okay, so something I don't like here is now is I don't like how um, it's kind of like, it's just like I skipped to the next floor. And it's kind of like you notice that it takes a... Um, a little bit to to generate the next floor a little bit not too much but you know there's a sh short there's a short break like i'm gonna go here and you can tell that you know it took me uh, like half a second to generate the next floor and that looks odd that doesn't look good so i want to add some um a little bit of um i want to fade out this is basically what i want to say fade out and then generate the next floor something like this No, I have misspelled. Fade out. I kind of like the levels that we're generating now. The, the hallways are really cool here. Oops. Um, here's something that I not quite understand why this is happen happening because I saw it in my game, uh, in my version as well. There is this something weird that sometimes you see a flash of black. Sometimes you see a flash of, um, I mean, the level flashes in. And I wasn't able to track down what the problem is. Sometimes it's, it's uh, smooth, um, fades out smoothly and fades back in smoothly. But every now and then it's kind of like this strobe, it strobes in the level real quick. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this. I haven't seen it yet. I will let you know. Oh, this is bad. Look at this. Huh? Why does? Why did it happen like this? I am not sure why it carved something like this. 
I'm gonna make a screenshot of this. This is bad. This might have been a situation where um, where we had like some other um, hallway going off to the side, so it didn't. Uh, it wasn't such a big of a problem. But putting a door in here, yeah, this this might have been like it, it, there was a hallway going out of the room to the side. And then it reconnected with the hallway going underneath, which is everything is fine. But then putting a door in this space creates like this diagonal thing that I didn't want to have. And so, uh, yeah, I think we want to make sure that if we're creating doors, we're never creating doors that go over, um, that go to the side. That we're always creating doors where they have like a, this side and the opposite side and no other uh, sides, so to speak. Yeah, we, we're gonna, we're gonna watch out for these. Okay, so that's gonna be a, like a no L-shaped doors. No L-shaped doors. That's something we're gonna deal with later. Um, uh, right, what were we working on? Uh, we were working on the fade out. So something I wanna add, like a little detail, and again, this, this, this episode is getting really long now, but um, you know, like a little detail, I think that that really makes things really nice. I wanna add like a floor message. Something like this, just like a little, you know, you are on this floor kind of message. Let's just call it floor mess, misg. And we're gonna go show misg floor dot dot floor. And for like 60, fr uh, 60 frames. And then when we go up the stairs, um, We generate the floor and then we're gonna show the floor message. Oh, look at this, this is also, no, I thought, I thought for a second the, uh, the stairs was um, in case, but it wasn't. Okay, so now we have the floor message, maybe uh, 60 was a bit short, let's make it 120. I wonder why I didn't make a hole in here, in this wall. I think along the right, this wall to the right. I think it would have been a good idea. Oh, this, is, this is actually a really cool level. I like it. Yeah, that's better. That's better. That's a way better span of, of floorage. <laughs> uh, floor displayage. <laughs> okay, so this is good. Um, so in the next, next episode, I want to start going through some of these things here. Um, something we can also do here is um, um, another to do um, hub level, hub level, <laughs> hub level. It might be nice to have the hub level here and going through the pro um, you know list of problems that we encountered. Slowly, um, slowly working our ways here and then remove isolated rooms is is an unrelated issue uh, or like an issue of, of these are problems that we encounter with our generator and these are actual features that could continue expanding the generator. Okay, so um, this was it. Uh, today I have my beautiful t-shirt. So LazyDesk Academy, these kind of t-shirts and like the other ones with the um, token limit are available in the shop downstairs. Um, you, the code will be also available in a, in a doobly-doo uh, together with the beautiful uh, uh, GitHub repository by uh, OMG. OMG Mog? OMG Mog, I think. <laughs> That's a, it's a weird name, sorry. Um, and of course, you can just download the P8 file if you are not into GitHub so much. Uh, and yeah, and you should also join the Discord. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.